Hello, it's winter term and that means it's time to start making videos for the new term. The first video I'm going to make this winter is on the new CCNA 20301, which was just released. I've got my Cisco hat, my swag on, I've got my shirt, my Cisco shirt, and I'm ready to go with this new CCNA certification. Also, the Cisco Networking Academy released their new curriculum, which is great. It goes from a change, it's a change from four courses down to three courses for the new CCNA, and that's pretty cool. Let's take a quick look at what's on the new CCNA. Things are very different. So for the most part, I'll tell you that the new CCNA is a lot smaller, a lot of uh, topics, a lot of topics have been taken out of the CCNA, so I think it'll be actually easier for students to get their CCNA now with this new CCNA. So that's good news for a lot of students. Now right off the bat, if we take a look at it, I'm on the website, you can see here that the uh, areas, the topic areas have changed. Notice there's a big one right here, automation and programmability. That's a big change. It's only 10% of the CCNA questions on the exam, but it's uh, this is where most of the new content is. Uh, the only section that has the same name is Network Fundamentals, but even this section is a little bit different, and I'll show you what I mean here. So if we open it up and look at it section by section, we'll, we'll take a look at some of the differences here. So Network Fundamentals, if we compare Network Fundamentals with the old exam Network Fundamentals, this is the old one here, okay? You notice right at the top here, it says compare and contrast OSI and TCP IP, and compare and contrast TCP and UDP, the OSI model. On this new one, it doesn't even say that here anywhere. So that's curious. There is, oh, it does say compare TCP and UDP here, but I'm not seeing anything about the OSI model, which is interesting. I, it's hard to believe that that would no longer be on the test. However, you've got the role and functions of the components, the basic role of the routers, switches, firewall, intrusion prevention system, access points. This is new. More, uh, more focus on wireless LAN controllers and Cisco DNA center, uh, endpoints and servers. Then you've got network topologies. Okay, we have network topologies and then physical connections. And this is just a different way of organizing it. Cabling issues. Uh, there is compare TCP and UDP, so that's still there. Verifying IPv4 addressing and configure and verify IPv6, that's still there. IPv6 address types are, need to be also still on the exam. Um, let's see here, wireless principles. So now wireless principles, a little more focus on wireless on this new exam. Virtualization fundamentals, be able to explain them. And then switching concepts. Now this this is a bit different from the network fundamentals on the previous exam. However, there is this doesn't seem to be where most of the changes are. So let's go to the next one. The next section is called network access. So this is basically the LAN side of things. And this is where you need to know how to, you still need to know how to configure and verify VLANs, normal range, um, access ports, default VLAN, connectivity, uh, you need to be able to configure and verify inner switch connectivity, trunk ports, 8021Q, VLAN tagging, and the native VLAN. So that is there. You need to know CDP, LLDP, layer two discovery protocols. Ether channel is still on the exam. However, not PAGP, it looks like just LACP. So that's a difference. And then one of the biggest changes is that Spanning tree, the, the role of the spanning tree protocol on the exam has been reduced. So you need to describe the need and basic operations of rapid spanning tree protocol, um, the basic operations, but it doesn't really say you even need to know how to configure it. So spanning tree protocol was a huge section in the previous CCNA and it's been reduced here. Then what's interesting is section 26, 27, 28, and 29, wireless, 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 wireless wireless LAN controllers, wireless related to QoS profiles, access points, um, all that stuff. So a lot more wireless. Now if we look at kind of section that was similar in the old CCNA on LAN switching technologies, you see that um, it's just more, uh, it seems like there's more here 
um, especially related to STP. Re, you know, you don't need to know port fast, BPDU guard. Um, there's no PAGP, uh, things like that. And then the question is, how much do you need to know for the VLANs as well? Is there, you know, before like we had DTP and VTP in the previous CCNA. So do you not need to know um, dynamic trunking protocol and VTP as well? Is that uh, not necessary? Um, do you not need to know how to configure these things? Uh, anyway, that's it's a lot. It's just different. Um, let's take a look at the next one, IP connectivity. This is the biggest section in the CCNA, 25%. And you can see that you still need to know about the routing table. You need to know how routers make decisions. You need to be able to configure IPv4 and IPv6 static routing. And all you need to know is how to configure and verify single area OSPF version 2 for IPv4. So not multi-area OSPF, no EIGRP, um, and you only need to know how to the purpose of a first hop redundancy protocol. It doesn't say you need to know how to configure it. On the old CCNA, if we scroll down here under routing technologies, which was also the largest section, it talked about routing, administrative distance, all these things. So inter VLAN routing, routing on a stick, switched virtual interfaces, that was listed here specifically that you had to configure it. But on the new CCNA, that's not listed that you have to know how to configure it specifically. Um, the difference between interior and exterior routing protocols. Let's see here. And then all of this stuff, you needed to know OSPF version 3 for IPv6. Um, you needed to know EIGRP for IPv4 and IPv6. And RIP version 2, you do not need to know RIP version 2, EIGRP, or OSPF version 3 for IPv6 on the new CCNA. So that is different. All it says here is configure and verify single area OSPF version 2 for IPv4, just the DR, BDR um, election process, the router ID, point-to-point uh, -point neighbor adjacencies, that's it. And then describe first hop redundancy protocols, but you don't have to know how to configure hot standby routing protocol. All right, let's go to IP services, security fundamentals, and then look at automation and programmability. So IP services, you need to still know how to configure and verify NAT, uh, configure NTP, explain the role of DHCP and DNS, explain the function of SNMP, but it doesn't really say configure it. You do need to know how to configure and verify the DHCP client and relay, but not necessarily a DHCP server, um, which, okay, that makes sense. Uh, QoS, you need to know the basics, explain QoS. Uh, you need to know how to configure SSH and describe the capabilities of TFTP and FTP. So these IP services are also, it seems, reduced. Now, if we go to the old CCNA and we look at infrastructure services, it was spelled out a little bit more clearly. So uh, configure server, relay, client, TFTP, DNS, gateways. So it's spelled out very much, very clearly that you needed to know those things. And then hot standby routing protocol, you needed to know how to configure, verify, and troubleshoot, and you don't need to know how to do that. So um, that area has been reduced, it seems to me, a little bit. So security fundamentals, basic security concepts, you still need to know how to configure and verify ACLs. It doesn't specify uh, whether it's just standard or extended ACLs, but it's there. And another thing that's interesting is ACLs is left on the list, which is good, and layer two security features, DHCP snooping, DAI, dynamic ARP inspection and port security, you still have to know how to configure those. DAI, before we didn't really have to know how to configure it, uh, it was not easy to configure on a, a basic workgroup switch, so that's interesting that that's there. You do need to know, once again, the last two sections here are wireless. So wireless is there. Wireless security protocols, WPA, WPA2, WPA3, and uh, configure wireless LAN using WPA2 pre-shared key using the GUI. So you still need to know how to use the GUI to configure a wireless router. All right. Um, what else? You need to describe remote access and site-to-site -site VPNs 
but it doesn't say that you have to know how to configure GRE like you had to um, GRE um, VPN tunnels like in the previous CCNA. And then this is just basic hardening concepts, passwords, device hardening, um, understanding threats, vulnerabilities, exploits. This is some basic security stuff that you still need to know. However, it's very different than the other, uh, the old CCNA. When we looked at infrastructure security, it covered things that are not listed. So, well, port security, you still need to know how to configure it, spelled it out. Um, 8021X uh, is, is listed here. It's not listed on the other one. Um, uh, ACLs probably need to still know standard, extended, and named. Um, and then you had other things. I, it's, this is pretty much similar. So I'd say that you still need to know most of these things. Uh, verify ACLs using the APIC EM path trace ACL analysis tool. This is interesting. We'll be looking at that in the last section of the new CCNA. Okay, let's take a look back at the new CCNA, the last section. We'll look at the details of automation and programmability. This is pretty interesting. This is all new for um, the CCNA. It's pretty interesting. So explain automation and how it impacts the network management. Compare traditional networks with controller-based networking. Controller-based networking is like the APIC EM. So the old networking and also now software-defined networking with network programmability, that's a bigger deal. Describe controller-based software-defined architectures. Separation of the control plane and the data plane, northbound and southbound APIs. Compare traditional campus device management with Cisco DNA Center. So you need to know about Cisco DNA Center on the new CCNA. The characteristics of REST-based APIs, CRUD, HTTP verbs, and data encoding. So how REST-based APIs work to automate, to automate the configuring of routers and switches, network devices using web calls and APIs. So you'll need to know basically uh, how uh, you can use JSON to send that data and to request data in JSON, JSON encoded data. And also the capabilities of different configuration management mechanisms and tools like Puppet, Chef, and Ansible. Now you don't need to know how to configure Puppet, Chef, and Ansible. You basically need to know what they're used for, for network automation, for automating the building of networks and servers and deploying deployment automation. Um, and REST-based APIs is web APIs, which you can do with uh, Python is often used. And so that's pretty new. That's, uh, this is new stuff here. So this is all new. It's only 10% of the CCNA, and, but that's where most of the new content is. Besides that, a lot of things have been removed. So things that you don't see here are BGP, um, eBGP is removed, PPP is removed, PPP over ethernet is removed, hot standby routing protocols removed. I'm not seeing a lot of stuff here about um, WAN connections. If you look on the old CCNA, there was a whole section. Let's take a look here. There was a whole section on WAN technologies. And in the WAN technologies, you had PPP, PPPoE, GRE, these are all gone. So all this WAN connectivity stuff is not in the new CCNA. And um, eBGP, configure and verify, that's not in there. You do need to still know basic QoS concepts. That is still in the new CCNA, but all these other sections are no longer there. So that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. And then um, we looked at these. How about infrastructure management? We didn't see what's here. SNMP, you needed to know how to configure and verify SNMP version 2 and version 3. It doesn't seem like you do on the new CCNA. ICMP echo-based IPSLA is not listed in the new CCNA. Uh, what else? Gosh, there's just so much. Um, network programmability, this is where network programmability and network architectures kind of software-defined networking existed on the old CCNA, and you can see it's been really expanded upon in the new CCNA. It has its own section, automation and programmability, with multiple subsections. It's still only 10% of the overall CCNA, 
but it plays a bigger role. 